Hey everybody, welcome to Dracino Wines, this month's wine wrap up, wine writers wrap up. And today we are talking about not such a volatile um, topic like we've done in the past, but um, this one is all about whether or not you should decant. Is there a time to decant, times not to decant, just do it whenever you want. So we're gonna get into that topic. But first I've got to introduce my panel for tonight. And first is Nick Barube, is the marketing and brand manager for two wineries in the Pacific Northwest. He began his career in wine down in Argentina, where he did marketing communications for a well-known Malbec producer. He holds his advanced certificate in wine and spirits from the Wine and Spirit Education Trust and is currently a WSET diploma student. So, hey, Nick. Hey, Lori. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Always happy to see you. Uh, next up is Michael Kelly, has been collecting wine since 1978 when he bought his first case of Mondavi Private Reserve. Began writing wine after retiring from high tech about six years ago and has sold wine to Michelin three-star restaurants in Japan and has brokered sales of grapes. He also was a judge in the 2018 Nevada Foothill Wine Competition. Hi, Michael. Hello, hello. Michael is joining us from the road. Well, That's dedication. <laughs> Next, Amber Burke writes for Travel Wine Eats, Amari Magazine, and The Vintners Project. She lives on the border of Napa and Green Valley. Her blog includes wine reviews, recipes, and articles about luxury travel. Hi, Amber. Hey. And our last panel member is John Taylor. He's been a wine enthusiast and hobbyist since before he was allowed to drink. I think we kind of all have been. Well, I was beer. I was beer. Uh, <laughs> he got his start in the wine business in 2011. Since then, he has been a sales and marketing professional for such esteemed Napa wineries as Roca Family Vineyards, Carradine, I always say it wrong, Vineyards. Did I say it right? Uh, sort of. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> and Brasswood Estate, a former recording artist for Atlantic Records and graduate of USC School of Journalism. John has been a writer all of his life and is the creator of the award-winning wine blog, Pairs with Life. So hi, John. Hi, Lori. Great to be with you. I'm glad you're here, too. And lastly, I'm Lori Budd. I am your host. My husband, Michael, and I own boutique winery in Paso Robles, known as Dracina Wines. We specialize in Cabernet Franc. We are the founders of Cab Franc Day, and we both graduated from UC Davis uh, winemaking program, in addition to our other science backgrounds. So i like to thank everybody for being here. And are we ready to start about decanting? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. So first and foremost, what is everybody drinking? Michael is driving, so he better not be drinking. <laughs> McDonald's uh, Diet Coke. Okay, so we got a McDonald's Diet Coke. I think I think we can we can improve on that, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> so I am drinking the uh, 2016 Fidelitas. Uh, Red Mountain Optu White Wine. It's a uh, white wine blend, 62% Sauvignon Blanc, 38% Semillon, mm. has about 60% uh, New French Oak. So with the uh, lactic acid from the Semillon, the acid from the Sauvignon Blanc, it's perfect for a summer day. Awesome. And John? Uh, not to sound too self-serving, but I am drinking the uh, 2016 uh, Yao Ming sparkling wine from Napa Valley. Uh, I'm here at the team. It's really, really good, <laughs> I can say. Like that. Uh, yeah, well, you know, I'm stuck here at the tasting room, so I'm just going to drink, you know, the supply. So uh, it's 75% uh, Chardonnay, 25% Pinot Noir, mostly from Carneros region in Napa. Um, I, I really love this. It's like my, my favorite uh, wine in the portfolio right now. Really creamy. Um, you know, really got that uh, that kind of champagne um, roundness to it uh, that I really love. And it's free here, so <laughs> yay! <laughs> yeah, yay! They'd be in trouble if I showed up there if it was free. <laughs> 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 well, I am drinking 
Forma de Vida from Lodi. It is actually from Marcus uh, Bokish, who we've met at the Lodi uh, Wine Bloggers Conference. Oh. And th this is actually a Verdejo, new to me, and I did absolutely no research, so I don't know anything about it. Um, but it is a Wink wine, so that is our sponsor, so that is always good. Um, does anybody know Verdejo? Yeah, Verdejo yes. is a fantastic yep. Spanish varietal. Is that is that from Bocas uh, Vineyards up in Lodi? Or yes, it is. So he um, some incredible Spanish varietals up there. It's amazing. He really is. I think he's an incredible winemaker. Um, he's and a great all around guy. Um, yeah. So this is from them, and I'm a little. I, I guess he's expanding because you know typically the wink. Wines do not have um, the names actually of the people who are making it. It's like the way the wink works, um, but it's nice and signed, you know, back there by Liz and Marcus. So, and I, it is my first one and I've got to say, it's pretty darn good. It's nice and crisp and, you know, we're in a cold front here in Fresno right now. It's 98 degrees. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, it is the first day under 100 since July 6th. Mm. So, you know, I, I might need a jacket, but um, this is uh, perfect for this weather. So, Mancha. Yeah, I do. No. So, Mancha. So, so, I'm not drinking tonight, um, but I am shamelessly plugging a wine. <laughs> and this is for my friends at um, Top Chain Vino. And yeah. they are in, they are importing beautiful wines from places that you cannot get wines from. And this is a, a beautiful Plavik Molly. It was 2012. You cannot see a label. It's it's all embossed, so you can't see it. And it's called Stina Plavik Molly. And um, it's absolutely beautiful. It's got this big rich if you've ever had plavic molly it's kind of a zinfandel on steroids this has got this beautiful chocolateness to it um and it's just it's just such a, a wonderful uh wine to drink with so many dishes it tends to be a little heavier but i really like it as a chill out wine something that's not too complicated that you don't have to think about a lot the great thing about what Tapachin Vino is doing is that they're bringing these wines that you can't get in the U.S. Um, from all over um, Europe, um, these hard to get places. And they're bringing them in and they're selling them at a really reasonable price so that they're affordable. Everybody can drink them. You know, a lot of the wines that we talk about, you guys all know this, they're getting really spendy. So these, these are, you know, 20, 20 bucks a bottle and you're getting something that's really, really tasty and unusual. It's not something that you'll see everywhere. So that's my shameless plug of the day. So <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. One of these days we're gonna get him uh, back on this uh, on this live stream on this wine writers wrap up. Uh, I think the the business is a bit busy for him. So yeah, he's he's very busy. He's he's very busy. I just had lunch with his wife and and partner yesterday, and they're they're doing so great. They've just brought in shipments now from Portugal and all kinds of things. They're doing amazing stuff, and I'm really excited with their their new lineup of what they're doing. So awesome! I I purchased from them a couple of months ago, and. Uh, in addition to, um, I did, uh, I think I did uh, Greek wine. Uh -huh. and I did, um, what was the first country? Uh, he was- Croatia. Oh, yeah. Croatia, right. I bought a couple of bottles in Croatia. I bought a Greek wine. And then believe it or not, I bought another Bokish wine from him. <laughs> They're just bringing in a Plavix Mali right now that was the favorite thing that I tasted in all of Croatia. And they're they're actually importing that Matusko, Matushko. And um, they're importing that. So I'm very excited. That's going to be in their new lineup. So That's anyway. awesome. awesome. All right. So decanting. I, you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of lazy. So I don't actually really decant. I'm more of the 
I'll just pour a glass and kind of let it air, whatever. So what about you guys? Do you do you decant your wine on a regular basis? For me, no. No, I wouldn't say regularly, no. It's definitely some specific conditions or circumstances. And what would be the, what, like, what would you? Like the number one thing would be age. If we're looking at anything 10 years or older, um, that's, uh, to me, that's definitely time to de decant and just allow it to get as much oxygen as, as possible and open up, you know, being confined in that poor bottle for so long. Uh, um, and then, you know, m maybe a uh, not so old, but bigger wine, like, you know, a lot of these Napa cabs uh, can use uh, a little extra uh, time and, and oxygen uh, to get them going, to, to get their balance back. And that is, those don't have to be as old as, you know, as 10 years. Uh, if I know if something's going to be, you know, a big old baseball bat of, of oak and, and fruit, then uh, I'll definitely decant then. Napa oak? Never. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> Nick, so I, I, guess I, I, I guess I'm on the, I decant probably more than a lot of people. We, we, um, we, dr we age our wines in our cellar. We're very specific about when, um, we drink certain wines. We, I have them labeled. Um, when I've taken, when I go and I taste, I label them of when I believe that they will peak um to give me the best out of my bottle um and then if if for some reason uh just like you said we're we're drinking something way too young or whatever then we have to make sure that we got to give it some love to to let it show um itself so we have a couple of things that we do um and and also cheap wine cheap wine if you give it some love and give it a little bit of um give it a little bit of a decant come on you guys all know it it really helps it out so and 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 i have some little tricks because i I didn't believe that this was that this was true, but you know, I hang with some really fun people and they, they assure me that these things happen. So I was talking with a friend and she, and I was saying, do you have a decanter? And she said, she goes, no, I just throw it in the blender. <laughs> like, okay. The blender. And then I laughed my head off. But then I saw that there's a new product out on the market that guess what it's it is. It's a glorified blender for your wine. And mm -hmm. it's saying that it's an aerator and it just basically it's a blender with a timer. And there you go. So um, this is my fun little thing. This is my this is my personal decanter that I use. Yeah, okay. Nice one. Um, you know, you get the air in and and gives it some something and when you're pouring out it it helps but in a glass there this is a little deal i don't know if you can see it can you see it guys and what this does is you pour the wine in and it goes around the spout and then oh yeah and then the wine comes out the bottom yeah and and it's got little little um holes in the bottom and it just it just really helps especially with a cheaper wine um and it and it goes really fast you can you can speed aerate the wine and it, it does a pretty good job it's not too bad but if you're really really gonna be um ghetto <laughs> here we go so you, you you've oh, all yeah. seen these aero latte things take this and you throw it down there and just give your your glass a good little zippy and there you go you got your aeration yeah. that's a little wine hack right there I there like you that. go a little right. wine hack for you see you learned, you learned something every day and and <laughs> uh you know there you go there's my big thing um as far as uh there is times where you absolutely do not decant wines and that is when you get a really really old bottle I got some really old bottles um, and I was on a wine writers conference and they were serving us some super beautiful old bottles and they decanted them before they poured them. 
and they fell into little bitty pieces. These poor wines just, they just exploded. And, you know, we're throwing away, you know, $800 bottles of wine. Mm. So, you know, watch it, watch it, you know, taste the wine before you aerate, before you do anything to it, taste it, see what it needs. That's my big thing. I agree with you, Amber. I think after even 15 years, sometimes just it, especially say Pinot Noir, uh, oh. you know, they're just too delicate. And I mean, if you're doing it just because you want to get out any kind of sediment, if it was, you know, unfiltered and fine, what have you, that's great. But any kind of extended uh, oxygenation, it's going to just kill off any of those real delicate aromas and flavors that are still there. Right. I was going to say, I think that that age thing has a lot to do with what the variety is, what that, you know, because, you know, there's some seriously there. You know, I had a 1949 Covent de Jacobin and it was decanted. <laughs> and but uh, how long, how long was it decanted? Uh, it was blind. So I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know, but I, I'm assuming not very long, but at least at least an hour because I'm pretty sure it was probably all set up for us before we got there to taste. Um, but you know, I don't I don't really know. Um, it definitely you know it looks prettier in a decanter than pouring it out of the bottle. Um, but I agree with Nick, you know, I think that, you know, a Pinot is a different beast altogether than, you know, than a big old Bordeaux. Um, but Michael, are you a? Yeah, I can, I can do it. Yeah, my only comment would be, <clears throat> excuse me, my only comment would be that I also, everything's eight to 10 years is pretty much across the board in, in the cellar. So we decant probably 75% of the wine for anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. And uh, I also decant anything that is uh, unfiltered. So it gives it, gives it a chance to go from the bottle down into the uh, uh, decanter. And we have all kinds of different decanters all the way from very simple decanters all the way up to the uh, Riedel um, uh, uh, Eve decanter, which you, know, you have to have a CD goes with it to, to know how to use the uh, weave decanter. So it's, but uh, all of that, I think, you know, the age, uh, the type, but really the, uh, the only other thing I would add was just whether it's uh, filtered or unfiltered. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to show, has anybody ever uh, done the, to get the filtering um, using the old coffee filter? Absolutely. Of course. Absolutely. Yeah. It works. Uh, and bleach it's coffee great. filter, why not? Yeah, I, th I think that there's not a wine lover alive who hasn't used the coffee filter, yeah. you know. And it comes in handy for other reasons, too. We had uh, gone out to dinner with uh, another couple, and we had brought a um, $125 bottle of wine. And when the waitress went to go open the bottle, she was not very adept at it, I guess. And she cracked the glass. Oh, wow. <laughs> so then, so the, the very top was, you know, short. and she was so apologetic. But, but, and I'm like, well, I am drinking this wine. <laughs> I am drinking this wine. And uh, so, I, you know, we told her to go get, go get a coffee filter so that if there's any glass, it's going to go into the coffee filter. Um, so, you know, there's decanters, you know, that are out there that are hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And I, I'm not an expert on it, so I don't know. But I get there's different shapes for different things for different reasons. But is it really that different? Does one decanter do something that differently than another decanter? Opinions? <clears throat> Well, there's that kind that you uh, pour into and then it doesn't sit up and you can spin it on the table and it looks really cool. <laughs> yes. So that's the best I got. I don't know, it seems to me that it's a, a lot of it's about surface area. Um, 
you know, the, there's decanters, um, just like the one that Amber showed, it doesn't seem to have as much of a surface area, but it has that wedge shape in the middle so that, you know, the wine pours down what, what, what becomes four sides almost of, of right. the decanter. Um, whereas you have the others that have a, the very large basin at the bottom and the wine, you know, goes across the, um, uh, a, a large surface area around that thing. And, um, uh, so it, it seems like, and my, that it's really about surface area and, and just trying to, uh, oxygenate as much as possible, uh, with that, expose it to as much oxygen as possible. But yeah, there are so many different kinds and I don't know what the other kinds are about. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would say that they, like the, there's an Italian one that I have and there's the Eve. And when you get it in the right position, you will pour out the same amount to each person that is sitting at the table. Oh, oh okay. So that's, that's an added, that's like a bonus to Canton. <laughs> yes, but it's very expensive decanter. <laughs> but, but that's the, that's the, the, as it does everything in basic aeration, but then it, on top of that, it it goes down to this neck, and then that pours the same amount to each person. Ah, See, I like to pick and choose who I like, who's going to get more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's pretty easy for me. Nick, this is why we get along so exactly. well. Exactly. Exactly what was going in my head. I don't want everybody to have the same amount. Exactly. You know, you've got that person at the table who, you know, puts ice in everything they drink. Not that there's anything wrong with that, you know, but like, you know, they might, I might want to give them a little less of my, you know, Mouton Ralph's wine. Fair enough. Yeah. Amber, what about you? Is that your, is it, do you have more than one decanter? I do. I have several styles. I just, I, I picked one off the shelf and I thought, Oh, I better have something to talk about while I, <laughs> while we're on this chat, you know? Um, yeah, I have, I have the one with the long bottom and, and whatever, but the best one that I ever saw as in best, most interesting one for a table discussion, it actually looks like a medieval torture device. It's so cool. They sell them at, um, uh, one of these, it, I forgot the name of it. Um, it's a new winery chain of restaurants that they're trying to get people from the Midwest to believe that they belong to a, a winery. Have you heard of this? No. Oh, yes, no. yes, yeah. So, um, and, and it's a fast growing restaurant in America right now, by the way. I'm trying to think of the name of it. Anyway, it's just not coming to me. Anyway, they sell them there and they're $499 for this decanter. And what it looks like is it's, um, it looks like a, a hole at the top and then, and then the shape comes down like this. And then there's a, a, a ball at the bottom. And so the wine gets poured in at the top, comes down by, by a gravity. And then you, pull the pull the chain at the bottom and put the glass up and that's how the wine fills into the glass and i'm like okay a very interesting and yeah my girlfriend has just started working there i wish i could remember the name of the place and i was thinking okay it takes up a whole lot of space and they have the big model and they have the large mo they have the small model and uh, yeah, very interesting. Wow. Does it actually double as a torture device? Because it, <laughs> might, be, it you know, might be worth the investment. Where do you put yeah. that on your dining room table? I have a dining room table that fits 10 people, and I'm telling you, you can't fit that sucker on the table. Wow. Where do you put it? Wow. And it sounds like when you pull the chain, the, that's what allows the, the water to the, the wine go to out. come out? The wine to come out, yeah. It sounds like, sounds like the, the water basin of a toilet. Yeah, exactly. Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> See now, my mind went completely in. <laughs> <laughs> Pull the chain and what happens, Laurie? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to put explicit on this. <laughs> but it has to be safe for work. Safe for work. Safe for your kids. Woo! I don't know, the, I've seen some, um, I, I think my 
I don't, I don't own it. I've never seen it live. I've just seen pictures of it. But I think my favorite one, no clue whether it works well or not. There's one that looks like a heart. You know, so it's got like the aorta. It's got all the oh, like really, a real like a real heart. So being biology geek that I am, that one, you know, you actually pour, I think you pour the wine into the aorta. And then it goes oh, wow. through the atriums and the ventricles and, you know, superior vena cava and all, you know, all that good stuff. <laughs> and how do you clean it? Well, that's a, that was going to be my next question. A bypass. Is, what? A bypass. A bi <laughs> <laughs> Quadruple bypass is needed. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, I find decanters, even... Our decanter is just very basic. You know, it's the neck with the big, long face on it. Um, it's not easy to clean. So all of these cool looking ones that have all these chambers and do all this, how do you clean them? Like, how do you guys clean your decanters? So I have a, I have a curved brush that goes around. Let me see. And she's got the prop of that too. I've got the prop. No, I've just got the prop. So it comes in and it curves round and it and it just goes under the bottom and you can swirl it around and then you pull it out and then do the other side. So this one's really simple and as is the bottom one, you just real simple and it just swishes round. But the that's one of the my big things when I look at at wine decanters and how practical is it to to actually clean those. Can you get all the bacteria? Wine has a lot of bacteria. It has things like bread in it. I mean, there's all kinds of things that you can get and then spoil your next bottle of wine. If you don't get that bottle of wine out, you know, there's all kinds of stuff. If you get a spoiled bottle of wine, you put it in your decanter and then, you know, you don't get all the wine out, your next wine that you put in there, guess what? You're going to ruin it. And what about, yeah. I mean, just the water, if you can't get all of the water out. The water out. That's okay. another good one. Yeah. Because yeah, I actually I actually blow dry my decanter. So in my decanter, oh. I kind of think I described, it has the large basin at the bottom. So it's just your typical large basin with the long neck. So I end up taking a chopstick and shoving a, uh, a washcloth down there and then oh. swishing around the washcloth and rotating it with the chopstick and then pulling out the washcloth, rinse it all out, and then try to drain out as much as the water I can. And then I take a hair dryer and stick it up in there and start blow drying until the water all dries up. Because that's my biggest concern too, is like getting some kind of mildew in your decanter. Uh, that would absolutely defeat the purpose. So blow dry it. Wow. I mean, you know what? Yeah. I'll, I'll use that one. That's a, <laughs> that's a great that's a great tip yeah. we we've had this redell which is this big looks like a snake it's called the you're, you're uh, nope. uh -oh. technology and then have it blow a blower dry it up and it's 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 more of a pain to dry than it is to to camp <laughs> right and that that is another thing like i'm i mean as much as i run around as much as i like to work out i like to work out i don't want to i'm lazy when it comes to cleaning i don't want to i don't want to clean i don't want to have such difficulty cleaning although the blow dryer is like awesome because the heat brings in a whole other element of of uh a great idea you know but uh Nick, any tricks? No, actually, I'm going to start using the blow dryer <laughs> trick. That's actually, I mean, I use uh, like a baby bottle brush just because you can get oh, long sure. ones and just to like clean. But in terms of drying, that's always been the, you know, yeah. the hard part. So blow dryer. Yes. That, well, that is the tip of the day. Yeah. I, I just want to, we, one of the things we always got was the water spot. So we finally, went to using distilled water for the final rinse. And then we also used the, uh, the bead, the uh, scouring bead on the bottom of the, of the decanter. And that seems to do the, do the trick. All right. 
Good good tips, good tips. All right, so Dr. Gavin Sachs, an associate professor at Cornell University School of Department of Food Science, notes that separating clarified wine from the solids suspended in the bottle was the original motivation behind decanting wine. So his belief is that it really had nothing to do with the oxygenation, that it just had to do with getting rid of the sediment and that type of thing. So I, I don't, I don't know if that's a debatable effect or if it's even worth a debate or whatever, but thoughts? I think it is probably very true, if not absolutely true. And um, I mean, that's when you go through like most wine studies, they'll tell you that's basically the point of, you know, when you're decanting and you, you have one glass left basically when you stop because that's the wine that you'll pour out because it has a sediment in it and you're just supposed to watch the neck of the bottle. And I think it's one of those just, things that happen, they started decanting and they're like, oh, it actually adds oxygen and helps the wine. And so it's one of those like penicillin, like somebody ate some mold and then got better. And you know, that's. You, you know how I love my microbiologist. Don't get me going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. Absolutely. You're, you know, you, pouring out the wine into some vessel so that uh, you can get rid of the sediment. And so you have this decanter and you put it in there. And um, yeah, I guess, you know, he, he came up with his theory, you know, before the days of coffee filters, because uh, <laughs> it you know, kind of makes it a, a moot point now if you want to go the whole distance on a, on a bottle of wine. But uh, yeah, I agree with Nick that you know, he must have discovered at the same time that the additional uh, aeration you know, really added to the, the quality of the wine. Well, too, back then they weren't really, you know, oaking the wine as something that they did to make the flavor better. Mm -hmm. Really, the oak was used as just simply storage. Now they're doing all the toasting of the oak and all these other funky things to make the, the wine have a certain flavor profile to bring out things like vanilla and chocolate and this and that and the other thing. And, you know, a decanting that helps bring out the nuances in some cases of that where that wasn't the case before everybody just you know you made your wine you threw it in your barrel and that was that you know pretty simple process so i think as time evolves and wine evolves and the way we drink wine is evolved you learn that there's a difference between micro oxygenation and oxygenation mm -hmm. you know um a little is good a lot is not so good. Not, not so good. <laughs> um, well, what are your rules of when you pull out a bottle, you have a rule of, all right, I'm going to decant this. Does it vary how long you're going to decant it, depending on what it is? Um, are you like me and taste as you go along so that by the time the decanter is finally finished, there's no more wine anyway? Um, <laughs> Uh, so what would you say are some rules of decanting? Anyway. Okay. Oh, I, I was trying to not be like talking over everybody. Go yeah. ahead. Um, I, I would say that time is one of the, is, is one of the big rules. If you can, if you can make it last for about three hours, I think that's really where you 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 get into the zone, you know, with, with, with some wines. But I'm with you. It's like almost impossible, especially if you're doing this over dinner. It's like, you know, yeah, you know, the French, the Spanish, they can eat over three hours. I, I can't, and it's nearly impossible. But you know, with some you know extraordinary bottle that that you're really going to try to save your. It, it, to me, that three hour period is going to give you the stages of that wine's development over time. Um, and uh, uh, so it's it's good to have you know for me it's it's that that you know large amount of time if you can possibly hold off. My trick to that: drink another bottle beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be the wine we get buzzed on and the wine that we drink. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yes. While I'm cooking wine. That's right. While I'm enjoying wine, you know. Yes. So I guess when I, when I think about rules, I guess there is some rules you think about, I mean, because I'm kind of 
weird about the cellar and and you know bottles will not be consumed for this date um uh, it, you know and then there's other bottles i don't care about but there are certain bottles where they have a date on them and death will happen if they you know are touched um and <clears throat> you know some of the bottles that i would definitely decant when i would be thinking about those wines um it, and again it depends on what type of a wine it is um how much that i think it will need decanting you know if it's a big huge cab that's going to need you know some time to just give it some air and some love then i'm going to give it you know all three hours and whatever sometimes it just needs an hour sometimes it just needs some time to just be in the glass um just depends on the wine how it's tasting how it's moving and then there's all the little tricks that you can do these days like the little re the little repour um corks and things like that that you can stop um uh, because uh stop the uh aeration and put it back in the bottle with the cork Do, have you guys seen those yeah love that yeah. love repours i mean yeah repour that's it and and you know you just you, you do that and you can stop it right there in the bottle if it's getting a little bit too much and you're good now you're set for your dinner you've done it in the morning you're set for your dinner you know pour it out you have total control with that okay i guess i'm a little too uh we're typically choosing our wine <laughs> as we're cooking <laughs> you know? um and i am i am probably the only wine enthusiast that hates food um so it's not i mean you know everybody's like oh i want this wine with this food and all this stuff and i'm like i have a panini like give me grilled cheese you know panini is just you know the glorified grilled cheese of the world um you know like i so my my meals don't take very long it doesn't take long to boil water and throw pasta in there. Um, so I don't, I'm never thinking that far in advance. So I have, I have that problem. Um, but yeah, three hours. I don't think I've ever decanted anything for three hours. Um, yeah, I don't think I have. Yeah, yeah I, I have done one which I thought was bizarre. Uh, there was a Tinta de Tora Toro and a uh, Monte Pucciano de Abruzzo, and they had a they had a sit literally overnight. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. There's a a wine at one of the wineries that we had. We were going to serve it uh, the day after Thanksgiving or the Thanksgiving weekend, and it was a 14, and we were going to be pouring it in some 15. I made sure that we opened all the bottles the night before them and then let them sit just because it needed that time it was a Torriga Nacional and it mm -hmm. just it needed it yeah. um, you know a big Barolo that's not mm -hmm. you know 15 20 years old it's gonna need a, you know a lot more time than some of these more delicate you know varieties when you I, say that, I, you corked it I, and, and kept it overnight did you did you leave it in the bottle? You cork it, then put the cork back in, and left it like yeah, that. We, we let it we let it sit for a bit, and then we just put the corks back, and we didn't put any like argon or anything like that. We just Excellent. let it sit, and the next morning I came in, and it was absolutely beautiful, showing all of the nuances that I know it could. But well, that's another great tip. I like that. It was so it was not good. So yeah. how do you how do you I'm going back to that that same question of you have something in your head of this wine needs an hour this wine I think needs two hours or three hours like are you how are you determining that so for somebody who wants to open a bottle and wants to you know all right I know this needs to be be decanted what could you tell somebody as a tip of how long it should be decanted I, I let me let me give you be a funny story. I opened a bunch and I tasted them. I thought they were lousy. I I recorked them, gave them to my daughter. She went home, opened them, halfway drank them. I went there the next day and they were wonderful wines. I go, why did I give you all those good wines? So, I mean, I, I, it was like I gave her like six 
really good bottles of wine that were probably all, you know, seventy-five to hundred-dollar bottles of wine. And a day later, they were phenomenal. That's how we found out about the Chiriga. It was by chance, and it was by chance in my apartment. I had opened a bottle. I was like, "This is not no." And then the next day, I went back to it, and I was like, "Oh, holy cow!" That's terrific. Yeah, I, you know, I think that for me, when I talk about the the three hour period, I don't think there's any for me. I don't think there's any way of knowing exactly how long it's going to take. But if you if you have three hours and you're tasting it during different periods over that uh, d different times over that period, each time is going to have sort of a different profile to it. Um, you know, it's going to taste differently as it did the first hour, then it does the second hour, then it does the third hour, or, or as the other guys are saying, you know, overnight, um, it'll be entirely different. Um, you know, the wine's changing and evolving over that time period. So it's just kind of a fun experience to, to you know, check it out during, you know, every hour or so, um, again, if you've got the patience. Patience. But yeah. like, doesn't that cause a problem with you, with those of you who actually cook real meals and plan, <laughs> you know, and plan, you know, I mean, you might be having your dinner at, 6 p.m. So you're opening at you're opening it at three because you think it's it, but now it's not quite there or it is there. You know, like how do you guys manipulate that? Oh, I was just gonna say, Lori, I work in the wine industry. When I'm cooking just my regular old meal, I'm not drinking you know fifty, seventy five, hundred dollar wines. So that's not an issue. That's special occasions for me. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say we use the Lori. The Lori rule. Open another bottle. <laughs> uh, you know, I will try and do one of the little gadgets. Um, if it's not quite there and I really need it to be there okay. for whatever reason. And you can't serve another bottle. Either either it's too much alcohol. You don't want to be oh, wrecking oh, your oh, oh, Too much alcohol. Okay. Yeah, because usually I do like multi-course meals. So if there, if you, you just can't blow everybody's palates on, you know, I, I also don't want it to be the second bottle if I'm serving something really good. You don't want to, you, you don't want that to be the second bottle. You want it to, your palate to be nice and fresh. So, you know, it, it really hasn't had, I haven't had a problem with it, a, a wine being so out that, you know, I've, I've thought, oh my God, if I would have only had another couple of hours to decant this. No, you know, you, you kind of know. You, you, it's experience. I think it's experience. Yeah. All right. So moving on, do we decant whites? Anybody decant a white? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I decanted a sauterne and a bagnol. Um, it just, uh, especially the bagnol, uh, you know, it's, it, it's just one of those wines that gets browner and browner as time goes by. And, uh, um, you know, it was 20 years old, just felt like let's decant this and see what happens. Uh, and same thing with the Sauterne. I had a Chateau de Quine uh, a while back that was. Right. I need to come visit you for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> it was sort of a once in a lifetime event. But, okay. uh, um, but yeah, we, we decided to decant that as well, uh, just to, you know, just to follow the rule. And I, I, I would say that it was a mistake to not try it before so that I could do a before and after, but um, it was delicious. Yeah. Yeah. So again, yeah. the age thing, right? Again, the age thing, exactly. Yeah. Amber, are you going to say something? No, no, I was just trying to get in a comfortable position. That's oh. all. Nick, Michael, you got anything about decanting yeah. white? I was just uh, talking to a winemaker the other day, and he was saying specifically on a Roussan, he likes to decant it uh, for a short period of time. And I have a bunch of Roussan, Marsan, and I've never, I've never personally decanted a white wine. Mm. 
I haven't either, although I did see Smith Madrone um, decant a 30 year old Riesling. Mm. Oh. And I mean, okay, so Smith Madrone Riesling and 30 years, like, come on, that was just fantastic. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I was a lucky person to get to drink that, but um, you know, I, I just thought that they were doing it for to make it look nicer when they were serving it. But maybe I'll, I'll have to ask Stu about that. Right. So did, going back to the question you asked me, did they decant it just to make it look pretty? I don't it know. Absolutely does. Or you know, I I really don't know the answer to that. I really don't know the answer to that. Because I do, I absolutely agree. It definitely looks prettier in any of those decanters than just pouring out of. A well, bottle. I mean, sometimes the bottles are, you know, when you, especially when you're getting those old bottles, the, they look kind of moldy and they look that nice, you know. Okay. I, they, I mean, it's a fact, you know, you get it's a damp cellar conditions and you know, a lot of age and uh, you know, whatever they just, the, the labels don't necessarily hold up all that great, the glue conditions, whatever. So, you know, putting it in a pretty decanter that looks so gorgeous and elegant, you know, and it adds more ceremony or whatever to. True. True. And it's also it, 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 the, the other visually pleasing part about it is that, um, older whites take on a very complex color. Um, you know, it's a deeper uh, yellow. It's a, uh, you know, sunflowers and sunshine and, and gold hues and things like that, which you can't see really in the bottle. And, you know, you pour it in the glass and you start to get a, an idea, of course. But yeah, it's beautiful in the decanter. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna go off of decanting for one second too, because I was thinking gadgets. Um, has anybody seen the gadget where like it's the flashlight for the neck of the wine, so that as you're pouring the the unfiltered or you know whatever wine, you can see the sediment in the neck of it. Have you guys seen this? Oh, I, I have not seen that. No. I saw, you know, you, you scroll through the Instagram or Twitter or whatever, and I, I just saw a video of these people who were trying to sell this, and I don't know who it was, I don't know what it was, and all I thought to myself was, you, you can kind of see sediment. You don't need, a, you know, this gadget to do that. Um, but that was a complete sidebar. I just was curious. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, squirrel. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> one of our one of our chats should be our favorite or most outrageous wine gadgets. Yeah, absolutely. That would be awesome. I All mean, right. there's well, so many well, out there. Well. They're so fun. And, you know, as wine writers and in business, you get sent or see so many. And they're some of them are just downright hilarious. The wine condom. Yes. yes. Oh, the wine to condom. I mean, I could go for hours on that. I actually got <laughs> sent some from somebody. I think my assistant sent sent them to me just to be yes. funny. Yes, the wine condom. Although, you know, I will go, some gadgets are actually like, well, I don't know if that classifies as a gadget or not, but has anybody tried wine knots? Or not wine knots, wine wipes. Yes, oh, yeah. wine wipes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Okay. Those things are amazing. Now, in all honesty, I do not, like, I feel weird, and I really never feel weird. Like, it's tough to, <laughs> it's tough to embarrass me. Um, but to sit there with, and doing this, you know, wherever, um, is a little weird to me, right? But when we were in Bordeaux, we had a little wine accident in the hotel room, um, on the carpet, and kind of all over the wall. Um, <laughs> It, it was it was late at night. Let's just go with that. And <laughs> there we all are with our little wine wipes, <laughs> and we're rubbing the carpet and we're rubbing the wall. And Fabian is not helping us clean. He's videoing it, but it worked. It took the stain right out of the carpet. I mean, like wine wipes are like. All that. That's a great invention right there. I mean, oh, took it right great. out of the carpet, took it right out of the wall, 
you know, um, it definitely a highlight of, you know, a kind of a funny thing. Um, but yeah, Amber, I will add that to the list. We will do that. We will definitely do that because I am always looking. It's kind of tough to come up with with concepts that are always fun and engaging or controversial. Um, so yes, we'll add that to the list of our future wine writers wrap up and beware, you've got to bring your gadget. That's what it's going to be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So my, la my so, last question, oh, did somebody say something? No, uh, is the wine wipe uh, the same as the, uh, is it the same solvent that's in the uh, wine away? No. Um, so I believe guys. wine away, I think wine away is literally just white wine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's which just citric acid. Like white wine gets out red wine. You don't really need any gadgets. Um, good old science enzymes. Um, but uh, no, wine wipes, I think, is pretty much baking soda. I, I don't know. I've never actually read the label. Um, does anybody know? No. Um, I, I got some for uh, my husband because um, poor little baby. He has British teeth. And um, so <laughs> he does. And so, you know, um, <clears throat> when he drinks wine, the wine sticks to his teeth and his poor teeth look black. I mean, I, like you've never seen the anybody's teeth look black. And so I got them for him. And his dentist actually said, you know, you can't use them on your teeth because they're not, for his, it, the enamel is already so low, I guess, that oh. you can't use them, that they'll hurt his teeth. So I guess the only thing to do for them is is go ahead and get some major work. But oh. that was interesting that the doctor said that, the dentist said that. Wow. It's hydrogen peroxide, uh, we'll say sodium bicarbonate, so, you know, baking soda, mm -hmm. uh, glycerin, calcium, and potassium. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So it's the probably the baking soda. I mean the the bike, not the baking soda. The hydrogen peroxide. That's probably too tough on the teeth. Yeah. 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 So we'll we'll see. We'll wrap that around to the next uh, to a future one. Yeah, because there's a really good one called the Kelvin. Have you heard that one? The Kelvin. Yeah. Can't yeah, talk about them all now. We're gonna have another one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do love the Kelvin, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> all right. So back to decanting. My last question is: Are there any wines or wine regions that you would say what do not decant? I don't know. Hmm. A whole region. Well, I just drove through Lodi. I would. I <laughs> wouldn't. <laughs> just saying that. Just think of that. Lodi's in. Don't do it. Don't do it. So I'm asking this question because um, I was like looking through articles and reading scientific journals and things like that, um, and there were several people who were saying, do not ever decant burgundy. That goes back to that old age of Pinot Noir and just soft finesse. And if it's super aged, you're not, you're going to lose a lot of it. You're going to beat the hell out of it. Yeah. Cause yeah. I didn't know why. So I was curious. So that's it. Just it. You think it's too, too delicate, too brutal, too delicate. The wine is too delicate. The wine is too delicate. Oh, interesting. So you guys all agree with that now that I pointed that out? Thank you. I'd totally go with that, yeah, especially with Burgundies because, you know, you get a uh, highly concentrated Pinot from Santa Lucia Highlands or something. It's an entirely different ball of wax, so I wouldn't, I don't know if it would the same thing would apply. But, yeah, Burgundies are so subtle to begin with. It makes absolute sense. So not, you know, I mean, I'm, I've always said I, I'm more new world. Um, my little trips to Bordeaux has changed my mind of Bordeaux, um, but I don't, I don't uh, 
really have a lot of experience in tasting. So I wouldn't have, you know, I thought that was interesting that they were saying Burgundy, but. Yeah, you know, I actually, I'm, I love Italian wine and, you know, anything, Barolo, Sangio, you know, any of those, Nebbiolo, any of those type of wine. I always like them better with a tiny little bit of age. Just give them like two years, whatever, and then give them a little air. And they, they're they wonderful with food and whatever. Those really just do so well with decanting. A little decanting, just two years, and you got something really great for really cheap. What do you guys think? Sounds great. <laughs> I love Italian food. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. Okay. Right. So you guys ready? Okay. The time it is. Riddle time. Perfect Riddle time. time. Perfect. No, real time. Riddle time. Okay. Uh, well, I'm right. heading into the foothills, so I'm going to lose connection. So it's good timing. I'll say it fast. I'll say it fast. Ready? The sun bakes them. The hand breaks them. The foot treads them. The mouth tastes them. Grapes. Nick, you are so awesome. <laughs> Nick, like is, you, you got a challenge. You got to challenge me. I know. <laughs> I know. Nick is just kicking butt in the riddle game. He really, he really. I is. excelled in third grade. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are leading, and you know Rick's not here this week, so now yeah. you really went. You know, you went over and above. Yes, grapes. I did kind of think that was an easy, uh, you know, a somewhat easy one, but I liked it. Uh -oh. All right, so this is your time, Vegas. <laughs> this is your time. <laughs> Gotta love live TV. Uh, anyway, so we're up to wrap up time. So this is the time for you to plug yourself. So what's happening what's in any upcoming week anything you want us to know about you i'm just going to go left to right so on my screen so amber you are up first yeah it's going to be a kind of quiet week um david uh, my husband and writing partner is just texted me and said he is on his way home from london um, and it's going to be a little bit of a quiet week time for us to, you know, get some writing done and, and some editing of some photos done. But, um, after what's coming up is, uh, headed down to San Diego and I'm going to be headed to Temecula nice. and I'm trying to taste some Temecula wines. So this is going to be really interesting. Um, I, I have not done that since I was a child, literally. So this should be interesting to 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 get down there um, toward the end of the month. Oh, yeah, I have not tasted from there either. So it would be it. Uh, you got to let me know how it goes. Yeah, I will. I will. That's it. I'm out. All right, Nick. So wine calm guy, you can uh, find me at on Instagram wine calm guy, Twitter wine calm guy, wine calm guy .com. Um, Let's see. I have a few new wine reviews being posted this week. I start the Unit 5, which is sparkling, uh, of the diploma program So at the end of the week. So I'll be probably doing a lot of sparkling wine uh, posts. And then uh, in can case I you have Can I come back out and see you and help taste with you? Yes, you absolutely can. It would be a fabulous if you'd come back up and visit. Um, and then in case you haven't seen it on Instagram, I actually do some freelance uh, non-invasive medical procedures. So <laughs> he does. What? <laughs> you can come up and visit me and just share. Dude, you TMI. I think TMI is going on around here. <laughs> oh my God, he removed staples from this woman's head on Instagram. <laughs> Oh my God! At work, <laughs> at the winery. <laughs> you know, I had to tie tie it back to my POV. If I'm gonna like take staples out of people's heads, I'm gonna do it at a winery, obviously in a vineyard. And what what was my comment? How come when I cracked my skull open, they had to shave my head? That was my only right. comment. <laughs> so. Yeah. So more medical procedures on its way, maybe. Okay. Possibly. 
possibly. <laughs> John, you're up. <laughs> Uh, so this week I am trying to uh, finish, do some finishing touches on my uh, new novel, uh, which is called Pairs with Life, uh, which is kind of oh. kind of based on a, a story around the blog that I write, which is at pairswithlife.net. Um, the manuscript is with a copy editor right now, so they're putting it all in the standard format, so it's all compliant with the Chicago manual style, et cetera, et cetera. And then in September, I will start in earnest to try to get a literary agent and publishing and all that good stuff, so we shall see. Uh, in the meantime, I'm back to uh, blogging as full-time as I possibly can. I've got a new post coming out tomorrow uh, at pairswithlife.net and um, going to try to do some uh, more intensive uh, reviews um, on the 2016s, uh, which are you know, here in Napa are being bottled uh, this month and next month, or, uh, right as, you know, right before um, harvest starts up. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's good to sort of be out of the cave and not just writing full time and going insane i mean like literally insane uh so that's good uh i might even take a day off or something which i, I remember wow. is like something that people do uh <laughs> so we'll see congratulations on the on the novel yeah. thank yeah. you I'm can't wait to read that yeah. Yeah. Thank you. yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna post the first chapter uh, on the blog here in the coming weeks as soon as I get the uh, manuscript back, and um, yeah, and then it's cross your fingers time. Awesome. Sorry. Good luck, and I can't we can't wait to read it. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, well, I'm Lori. We uh we are almost. I think we have like six bottles left of Cap Franc. <laughs> so no. we are, are you so kidding far. me? <laughs> uh, so yeah, we are almost sold out of our Cab Franc. We are um, doing our next tasting event is actually in Paso this coming Saturday. So I'm very excited about that. We are going to be at the Wine Boss and um, just with your rosé. Um, yeah, probably, <laughs> probably. Um, and it is. Uh, dog friendly. So we are going to be on the patio of the wine boss and we are going to be um, having all the dogs come meet Vegas. So that is what we're doing. And then uh, our next event is at the end of August, which uh, is at the Fresno uh, Chaffee Zoo, which I am still begging Nick to come fly in and help pour with me. Um, that and, might happen. Yay! And uh, so we'll be at the zoo pouring the rosé uh, to benefit the zoo. And you know, I'm all about animals, so. That's terrific. Yeah, so that's where we are. And I will keep harassing Nick till he says yes. <laughs> so that is it. So I wanna thank everybody for joining today. And I appreciate you guys taking your time out of your, I'm sure, busy day. Um, and um, next month, is going to be September 10th. And oh, I might have to change that. Nope, September 10th is good. I take that back. Nice. I will still be here in California. I, you know, it's really tough, the bi coastal thing when I'm here, when I'm there, whatever. Um, so it is September 10th, and it's going to be should you drink the wine now or drink it later? No. Ah. That is the next month's topic. So hope you guys can join in next month and thank you very much for joining. And one last luncheon. Mm, cheers. 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 Cheers everybody. Thanks, Lori. Yeah. Thank Thanks you. Again, Lori.